Hello, good morning to everyone. This is Pete and Dorcas Masita with you on this Sunday, uh, June the 13th. Boy, I tell you, do you have any coffee back there? No. All right. <laughs> June 13th, 2021. Boy, I hope I get my act together here. And so glad to have you. We're we're Cornerstone Assembly Independent Pentecostal right here in Cambridge, Maryland. We're also Masita Ministries uh, worldwide on the internet. And that's 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 actual. That's actually true. Over 100 nations, somehow, we've reached somehow, in some way, through our various branches out there. And that's good. We're living in a time, you know, each successive generation thinks they're wiser than the one before, but the Bible tells us differently that the, it's the older generation that really has a knowledge a lot of times. And especially when you live in a godless society, uh, people think they're smarter, smarter, wiser, wiser, and they're not. Uh, as you can see right now, the world's going completely against what God has set up, and that'd be a good thing to talk about sometime. There's so many things to talk about from God's Word to share what's happening in these last days, and uh, but it takes time, man. And but you'll see, you'll see. You know, everything that's in Genesis chapter three, uh, everything that the Lord changed in us because of we our sin. Uh, basically, the world's trying to to revert that and so on. And uh, as you know, Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying God, and they disobeyed God by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when they're not supposed to. God told them, don't eat from that tree. And so, but they did anyhow. And so now we know both good and evil. Sad to say that a lot of times, uh, things that we create that are good, they have evil into them and so on. But uh, the world's not getting smarter and it's not getting wiser all the time. I heard more about, I know this is political, you might not like this, but I keep hearing about global warming and climate change, more so climate change, and how they need money to combat climate change. So I wonder what they're doing. Now, I heard a few things, but I really think that no matter what you do, no matter how much money you throw into it, you're not going to defeat it because I think it's natural. It's a natural occurrence. Uh... And, and all, but that's my opinion. But the thing is, we're living in a time people think they're smart, and so now instead of having just male and female, we got all these different genders and stuff like that out there. Uh, no, my friend, no, and that's not the way to go. We want to stick with this God's Word, truth, amen? Yeah. Absolute truth, and that's wisdom right there. With some wisdom, we want to go, or for some wisdom, we want to go to, to Proverbs chapter 8. And I have a little chart here on this one uh, because it's good to see certain things in God's Word. So we want to read now Proverbs chapter 8, verses 32 to 36. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gate, waiting at the posts of my doors. And for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. And those who hate me love death. All right, this is a really interesting passage. And this is what you and I need to do when we look at Scripture to, to read back and so on and look at certain words when they're repeated and if there's any progression. And we see that here in this passage of Scripture. And this is going to help us to understand what we're going to look at this morning. First of all, blessed is mentioned twice. You see that outlined in a purple rectangle. rectangle. And so it's mentioned twice. Uh, very similar to uh, what we have over in Psalm 119. Psalm 119 begins with two blesseds. And I could have used that as a comparison, but I chose not to. And then also, uh, the next thing I have, for you to look at is the phrase listen to me hear instruction and listens to me okay that's is all the hebrew word and i hope i say this correctly shema shema you'll hear people say shema but the emphasis is on the last syllable and i would i guess maybe the first part is a uh what should i say a strong vowel but it's shema and you heard that before shema shema Shema. And, uh, no, 
I said it wrong now. Shema. Shema. There we go. Shema. So it's easy, so easy to get that messed up. But the thing is, it, it, this is what is used where it says, Hear, O Israel, your Lord, your God is one God. And so that's where, where that's used also. And then as you look in this psalm, or not psalm, this, this proverb here in verse 32, wisdom refers to those that would listen to her as my children. And then in verse 34, we have blessed is the man who listens to me. And so that would indicate to me that the Holy Spirit tells us that we need to progress. Uh, yeah, we are children of God if we're saved, but we also need to grow up in one aspect, not just one aspect, many aspects, and become mature in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, you see progression there. Now we want to look at a couple of things here, and I want to bring another screen up for you here because we're going to take this bit by bit over in uh, the uh, here we go over uh, on, let me just switch the screens here God excuse me I got so many things going on all right first thing that we want to know is the requirements for the blessings of wisdom wisdom has lots of blessings for us and the requirements are seen uh, or they begin to be seen over in 32 and 33 where it reads, now, therefore, listen, my children, for blessed are they who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, do not disdain it. So we're told to listen, and old King James, perhaps, hearken to God's wisdom, 32, and like we said, this is repeated three times in this passage, listen, hear, hearken, whatever, so on. Repeated three times in the passage before us. And uh, based upon the immediate context. Now this word, let me say again. Oh, it's really Shema. Sh Shema. That's how they got it here. Shema. Uh, so Shema it means, it's, it's very broad, but based upon the context here. And also the context of the book of Proverbs. It means to listen with the result of obeying. <laughs> So you just don't sit there here and walk away and don't do what you, you heard. But it's it's based upon the context, based upon the book and so on. It means that we need to attentively listen and with the result being that we obey. So that's what the aim is here. So uh, listen, to, listen to me, my children, uh, for blessed are they who keep my ways. And right there you have a blessing. Uh, there, if you keep the ways of wisdom, and we'll talk more about wisdom in a minute. And well, let's put it this way: Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. Now, if you read Proverbs eight, it sounds like wisdom was created, but this is, in other words, this is the how can I say this is the applied wisdom that Christ gives us. Christ was not created, but this is the applied wisdom that Christ gives us when it comes on the inside of us. And yes, that was formulated when he lived on earth and he lived the life that you and I are supposed to live but he always existed so don't get that wrong and uh, so he always existed and what we see here though is we, and what we're going to talk about is Christ's life applied to us and that is wisdom it is definitely wisdom all right then 33 listen hear God's instruction uh, uh, and we see that when we get to the New Testament, uh, and it says to be wiser, the only way to do this is through Jesus Christ. Uh, you and I cannot be wise, and we will not have the ability to enjoy it or approve it and so on unless we have Christ inside of us, and that's what's needed. And so he trains us into his wisdom, into his life and all. And that is the wisdom that we need for today. And that's the wisdom that we need to get us on into all eternity. And so it's Christ within. He's the one that teaches us. He's the one that instructs us. And uh, we're going to bring you to another scripture now at this time. And that's over in Matthew 28. I'm sorry, Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. And here they are. 
Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, I guess it's not really by happenstance, but tonight at Cornerstone, we'll be looking into John chapter 8. Those chapters in John are quite big. And I, for one, do not like to rush through things. Uh, and all. And if you look at the Song of Psalm right now, I mean, we're up to 40 lessons and we're only into chapter, well, we'll get, we're in chapter 6 now of Song of Solomon. But there's so much there. But in John chapter 8, I think once you get past verse 27 and so on, which we will be looking into tonight, uh, Jesus talks about you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you, set you free. Uh, this is it right here. He is the truth. If you, if you keep reading over in the, the Gospel of John, when you get to John 14, he says he is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. And you can kind of combine all those together, yet look at them separately. And he is all those things. But this is, you know, if you also, if you look over in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I believe it is, Paul, by the Spirit, talks about the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. He makes contrasts there by the Holy Spirit. And then he points to the fact that Christ is the wisdom of God. And, of course, wisdom applied is not just head knowledge. It's also a knowledge, a personal knowledge that helps you and I to live the life that God would want us to live. So Jesus wants us to be instructed by him. If you look in John 8, it says, uh, if you continue in me, if you continue in my instruction, my doctrine, you are my disciples indeed. So you got to keep in there with Jesus Christ. He keeps training you. Uh, I'm going to use this probably tonight, this vocal illustration. Uh, you can go take martial arts. <laughs> you, know, you know, I had, what, a year and a half, maybe two years of martial arts. But that doesn't make me a kung fu or karate master, okay? No. Uh, in order for me to be a black belt, and really the highest I understand when it came to karate or, or judo, was a red belt. In order to get that, you have to hang in there. You just don't drop out and say, hey, I'm a karate master now. I'm a martial arts master now. No. you got to hang in there. And so... Uh, he, he, it's the same way with the Lord. We want to hang in there with him, and we want to become victors in him. There is such a thing as victory in Jesus. And Amen. we're living in a time when people don't understand that. They, it's not taught. It's not preached. And by the way, teaching and preaching go hand in hand. So it's not taught from our churches. It's not preached in our churches. Uh, and I, I really bothers me when I hear preachers say that, I just go from one place to another, and I struggle with sin. My friend, you know, it's so, all right, you might want to admit that, but this is how I would say it. If I was in that state, I would say, but my friends, I know the Word of God says there's victory in Christ, and I'm, I'm going to head towards that. Okay. Now, the thing is, the idea would be for a pastor or teacher to get to the point in their life where they're not struggling that much with sin, and they wind up and they say there is victory in Christ. I know for a fact there's victory in Christ, and that you can be, you know, liberated from a sinful life and you don't have to fall into these traps every now and then so uh yeah there's victory in christ and that's what we need to believe and teach it's in here the word of god doesn't say that once you get saved you'll still be floundering in sin and you'll be you know not knowing what's going on or you'll be too weak no the word of god says once you come to christ if you stay in him if you stay in him You'll get the victory. You'll get the victory. There's that rest that you and I need to enter into. And so there is victory in Jesus. I encourage everyone that's listening to this to get to that point. And, and also be wise. It's important to be wise, not as the world considers wise. <laughs> a lot of people out there that say they're wise. Oh, I'm going to go off on a tangent now. Once again, I hear in the body of Christ every now and then, a speaker will come by and they don't refer to him or her as brother or sister or even pastor. The pastor's a scriptural term, but they'll say doctor. 
doctor, you know, business guy or gals guy, I agree. They'll say, doctor, my friend, I don't want to come to church and hear a doctor. I want to come to the body of Christ and I want to hear my brother or my sister proclaim God's word as directed by God's Holy Spirit and not lift themselves up and so on. And uh, what I find a lot of times, these people that I'm not, they go for higher education. A lot of these people, they go for higher education, even in a denomination like the Sons of God, they'll go for higher education, they'll go for the Master's of Divinity or the PhD, and they become worldly. It, it is absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, and they, they quit talking like this, and they begin to talk like a doctor of philosophy and so on. They begin to talk like the world. There's something up there on that. Uh, <laughs> On my shelf over there that I keep, and I want to—I just keep it for, uh, for reference. I have proof of what this guy did. He sent me uh, a, a survey back around 2000 or so, 2001. And some of the God minister at the time, I guess, or at least he was going to some of the God college or university, and he's working on his Masters of Divinity, and he, he sent me this hundred-question questionnaire. And I said this before. I know I said this on a video before, but it bears repeating. So I'm not, so I know I'm 95. <laughs> but uh, no, I remember I said this before that uh, he, he, he put in there this question Do you have trouble losing your inhibitions at a party? I'm thinking, would you ask that of Wesley or Spurgeon? Or what's one more out there? Uh, maybe Billy Sunday. I don't know much about Billy Sunday. Would you ask that of these guys? What? What? Where are you living at, my friend? Okay. And you, so you send it to an assembly of God at that time of sons of God. Some of God ordained to some of God minister. What? What type of ministers are we supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Were they ones? Am I supposed to go to a party to begin with, where they have alcohol and? Maybe show a porn flip or something like that. Am I supposed to be there? No. But, uh, and then my inhibitions? Don't you think my inhibitions come from God? When God says don't drink, when God says don't look at pornography, they come from God. No, I'm not going to lose those. <laughs> I don't want to lose my salvation. <laughs> So that's the wisdom of the world. It creeps in into our churches and all that. And uh, by the way, you can get a higher degree and not become like that. And if you do, don't don't become like that. If, if, like I said before, if I had a PhD, you wouldn't know it. You would not know it. And you would not, I would not come on here and say, Dr. Consensus here. <laughs> say Brother Pete. I say Brother Pete. I like that. Brother Pete, Brother Peter, whatever. Looking back, I wish I would have changed it to Brother Peter Paul. That'd be great. That'd be better. <laughs> Two apostles and one. <laughs> that is my middle name, Paul. After my granddad. So, But don't disdain the wisdom of God's word. Don't lay it aside and say, okay, the wisdom of the world's better. And so I'm not going to read this and all that. And maybe there are more than one, two genders and all this sort of stuff. And just maybe this might be mythical and the no, that's what some people do after a while. And maybe the Quran or Science and Health and Key the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy is just as good as this. No, no, no. Okay? And there, I got facts on that. I'll tell you that this is supreme. I'm sorry, I'm covering your face. No, it's not fun. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I got a whole message. I, might be up there on video somewhere, either that or, or it's been uh, mothballed because, hey, for various reasons. But the thing is, no, this is truth and all, and I could explain it basically uh, real quick, okay? There's nothing like this, nothing like this. It changes lives when coupled by the Holy Spirit. Let me put that this way it changes lives to the glory of God. Now, you could pick up a religious book and, and have it change your life, but you might wind up being a murderer, thief, and so on, such as. One religion, Islam, when they look at certain things and there they have, they think they got the right to do these certain things. When they don't, <laughs> no, no, my friend, no, no, no. If you read this in its entirety, in its entirety, you get to the New Testament, you see that born again Christian 
Would it be the salt of the earth, the light of the world? And we don't call fire down from heaven upon those that bother us or come against God's word. And that's another thing, too. You say something about Muhammad or against the Quran, all sorts of problems break loose. In fact, now, it's okay to complain when someone comes against God's word. But we don't go out and killing people and burning down houses and ripping down churches and stuff like that. We don't do that. And we just let them speak, but of course we'll stand up for the veracity and the power of God's word. But uh, then if we're not going to go be killing people over this stuff, because Jesus said, you know, one time uh, the disciples and him were going through Samaria, and in some places they were not accepting them into their villages and so on. And some of the disciples said, "Shall we call fire down from heaven?" Because they were thinking the Old Testament, which yeah, that that back then. But he's, Jesus rebuked them, says, you don't know what spirit you are of. See, we have new wine within us, new spiritual wine, okay? And therefore, we have a new ministry uh, to bring people to the Lord. And it's working, by the way. Oh, I, I want to remember that when we get to prayer requests. All right. So, so that is requirements for the blessings. And now resolve to get the blessings from wisdom and let's bring that up on the screen for you again and this time are we okay that's pretty good i don't have to but uh, let me go ahead over there this time we want to go back to proverbs 38 and read verse 34. proverbs 834 yeah 834 what i say i've never 838. well give me coffee no. okay <laughs> blessed is the man who listens to me Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. All right. Blessed is the man. Yeah. You want to be blessed? There you go. Listen to God's wisdom, which is Jesus Christ. Within, if you're saved, you got to be saved really to hear this, okay, all the way. You can hear it without being saved, but it ain't going to do you much good until you get saved, all right? So watch this. You're know, watching daily at my gates. So it's not just for Sunday. It's not just for Wednesday nights. It's every day. Every day. And really, when you think about it, if you read the entire Word of God, it's every moment we should be thinking of God's Word. How does this fit in and all that? Or how can I share God's you know, salvation with somebody else? Or how can I pray for that person? It just goes through a mind all the time. And that's the way it should be. So, so blessed is the man who listens to me. It's Christ within. You get the New Testament. He is the wisdom of God. And of course, this is the third time Shema is mentioned here in this passage. So listen to me, and that's Christ within. Watching daily, where? At my gates. At my gates. That is in contrast with verse 3 of Proverbs chapter 8. I got the right chapter. All right, where it says, and wisdoms, she cries out at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. And I don't have the rest of it here at this point, but no doubt she's calling people to don't listen to the wisdom of the world. Listen to me. Don't become fools. Do not become fools. So you want to watch at wisdom's gates, the, the Lord's gates. Of course, the primary one is the written word of God. Also, listen, watch for the Holy Spirit. See, watching implies you're on guard, you're listening. I mean, watching means you're awake spiritually and you are on guard. It's very important. Over, I heard one terrible story from Vietnam. There are many terrible stories. But uh, they said that uh, there's one place whereby if you are on guard, you have to stay awake at all times, alert at all times because. If you don't, if you just, if you get too relaxed, you lose your head, literally. Yeah, so you watch daily. And so this is what you want to do in the spiritual realm. You want to watch daily. And then looking here, it says that waiting at the posts of my doors, or door, door posts in my sense translations. Okay, so this means waiting, but also waiting while observing observing you just wait 
Uh, that plays an important role too. And uh, at the post of my doors, I can almost see another illusion here, perhaps. Uh, I don't know if I should say or not. They were posted very important in Cosworth. And by the way, I'll, I'll say this one, though. What did they do in Exodus when God, before God brought them up out of Egypt? But they were told to kill a lamb or a young goat and sprinkle its blood on the doorpost and the lintel of their houses. Right? And so this is where we want to be at the blood of Christ, waiting at the post of my doors. That's exactly where we want to be. Praise the Lord. At the post of my doors. And then the last one here, we'll just go to roll on down. Okay, that would be 35 and 36 coming our way here. And go ahead and read that, please. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains, obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. In the New King James and other translations, they have the Lord with all capital letters, and there's a story behind that. It's really the divine name, and it's probably it's close to Yahweh. Uh, why do I emphasize that? Because names mean something. Peter means rock, right? Dorcas means gazelle, right? Paul means small. And names mean something. So what does Yahweh mean? The existing one. The existing one. And that's why he told Moses in the wilderness, he, I am that I am. And that's important to understand. God had no beginning. He has no ending. He just exists. And that's some people can't grasp that. I can. I can understand that. That God just exists. And at one point, he says, let there be light and create the heavens, the earth, and so on. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I can understand. I can grasp that. Because if you're going to believe in God, <laughs> God would have no origin, no beginning, and no ending. And he's you can't destroy him. He's everywhere and all. And that's, that's mind-boggling. Even more mind-boggling things. You know, that God took human flesh. That's, my, that's mind-boggling to me. Through the Son. And chose to act like you and I. And chose not to hang on to his prerogatives of deity, such as knowing all that and so on. And uh, just doing, you know, you know, uh, using omnipotence at all times. But no, he was directed by God's Holy Spirit. Now you might say, well, Pastor, you just said about knowing all things. And uh, one of the disciples did say at least one time, oh, well, Peter. I know Peter. At least Peter and somebody else said, in the New Testament, Lord, you know all things. But of course, it was by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. And uh, they were grasping at that point uh, along that line because uh, they were not filled with the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost. So the thing is, whoever finds me finds life. That's what you want, okay? Of course, life here is, you know, the vibrant life, not just every day, get out of bed, brush your teeth, comb your hair, go to work, go to school, lay down, take a nap, whatever. Not that type of life. Life with purpose, life with vigor, and if you have that now in Christ, you can have that for all eternity. Amen. And that reminds me, of course, of John 10.10. 10. We won't bring that up at this time. You've seen it many times before. But Jesus says there, I am come that they may have life. And that more abundantly. Amen. Excuse me as I take a drink. I think it's that verse too. And I don't mean, I'm not being mean here. I'm trying to show people there's a difference between religion and and relationship to God. Okay. Right before that, he says, the thief comes only but to steal and to destroy. Now, of course, you refer to Satan. Then. But, you know, it was, what, maybe six to eight hundred years after that that uh, Islam rose up. And if you read their history, now, they're, think they're thinking they're doing the right thing because they're looking at the Christians of that time or the so-called Christians 
And by that time, uh, the body, of, well, I won't even say that. Some Christians, you want to call Christians, they messed up the, the Trinity so bad, it sounded like we believe in three gods, but we don't believe in three gods. And of course, Islam is, of course, fiercely monotheistic, and so, uh, so am I. But I don't believe in three gods. But by the time uh, they came along, uh, they were quite adamant and so on. Also, by that time, by the year, year 600 A.D., 700 A.D., even before that, basically, idolatry began to creep in into the church. And now I'm using that term church either, well, probably like this, in quotation marks, okay, because the true church won't have idolatry. And that has always bogged me down through years as I study church history. Uh, and all, because people refer to these people as Christians, and I would prefer to say this Christians. I don't, you're slamming people. No, I'm telling the truth. A Christian will not have idols. But by that time, someone that said they're a Christian, they were having pictures of Mary or whatever, or statues and stuff like that. And there's a book over here, uh, March's Mirror, where you, you, you see that it start to occur early before the year 1000 AD. That this stuff was creeping in. People had statues of Jesus and stuff, you know, and so on. I get completely against God's word. So uh, the early Muslims saw this and once again to them, that's idolatry. And yeah, they're thinking right in that case, okay? And so they want to destroy that. But the thing is, they you start doing that, and if you keep, if you look at some of the literature, I tried to read it one time, and I'm not, this is no joke. I put it on the church computer one time, I put the Quran on the church computer, and the church computer broke after that. <laughs> and now I really don't have time to read. I just read one book of the Quran, that's it. And uh, But <laughs> as you read different parts of it and so on, man, they're open to destroying. And there, there are peaceful Muslims, but most times it's because they have not read the entire Quran or they don't really they have been taught what it what's in there and how to apply it. <laughs> Conquer a land. If they don't convert, start taxing them. <laughs> and if they don't convert after that, kill them. That's what it says. So when Jesus said the thief comes only to kill, but it's to go and destroy. Yes, he meant Satan. But also all the false religions that would come out, you know, from that point on, and uh, one of which was Islam. And you just look at the history of Islam, basically, whatever holy place is out there, or any religion a lot of times, but uh, they want to get in there, conquer that territory, and make it their shrine, make it their holy land, you know. And they say, this is how it was from of old. And of course, it's, <laughs> Islam never showed up until what? I forget, I forget what year. 700, 800, 800 yeah, neighborhood and so on. They didn't show up until hundreds of years after Christ. <laughs> and millennia after, you know, after Israel was established. <laughs> oh, my. But that's what they uh, have and all. And, yeah, and the United Nations plays right along. Says, well, along. okay, yeah, that's that's that really belongs to Islam. You, are you kidding me? The Jews were there first. <laughs> oh, let me go on. Let me go on. I don't, you know, but the rewards of, of the blessing and one of which is life, life more abundantly. And then it says here in 35 Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Favor from Yavah, the existing one. That's what we want. We want to be in his favor. We don't have, you know, if you're saved, try to get out of the rut of seeking people's favor and focus upon receiving God's favor. And that's going to put you into some tight situations from time to time. And you will lose some friends and you make some people angry. But we're supposed to be people of peace, peace with God, okay? You take a stand for Christ, someone's going to get angry at you. And they're going to disown you after a while. Some people will do that, not everyone. But uh, no, you want to find favor with 
the Lord God. And then if we don't go after God's wisdom, but he who sins against me, you go against God's wisdom, they wrong, you, you wrong your own soul. And in this case, soul could be the entire being. So is a very, in the Hebrew and also in the New Testament, it's very flexible. I mean, it's, it, it's, it can be very narrow and it can be very broad. And I have a message out there that sin can affect your body. So it's you. we could look at it this way, your entire being. Okay, If you and I do not listen to the wisdom of God, which is Jesus Christ, it affects our entire being. Don't want that to happen. And worse than that, you know, there's damnation. Look at this. Uh, all those who hate me love death. Of course, there, everyone dies physically at this point. But when the Bible speaks along these lines, it's talking about spiritual death, and you don't want that. Uh, earlier, we brought that up uh, on the screen for you, this whole passage. And uh, I indicated that in verse 35, 36. Whoever finds me finds life I have a hand pointed upward and obtains favor from Yavah. He who sins against me wrongs his own soul, and those who hate me love death, and I have a hand pointing down. It's red, basically. Uh, the hand blue I'm pointing up, blue represents heavenly heavens, amen? And, of course, red in this case, down below there, represents the lake of fire. Don't want to go there, but we're all set to go there and thus become the Jesus Christ. We want to avoid that, so we want to have Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God. So we want to choose Christ, the wisdom of God, so we can have life right now. I mean, real, abundant life, life with purpose, and not just for now will we have life. We'll have eternal life, too. But we've got to continue with the Lord. So now let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding, that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And right there you have proof positive that Christ is God. But he's God in the flesh, of course. He is the wisdom of God. Once he comes inside of us, if we listen to him, if we stay with him, if we abide with him and he in us, then we will have life, Zoe life, right now and for eternity. If you're saved, stay saved. Become the best you can in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask God to purify you day by day, moment by moment, and get into that realm of victory. It's there. Don't think you have to keep on sinning day after day. Don't think you have to keep on stumbling. No friend, read Hebrews and other passages, Romans. You'll see that there is victory in Jesus Christ. That's what I want to proclaim before Christ returns. There's victory in Jesus Christ. And friend, if you're not saved, like we said before, everyone that's not saved, we're all predestined. We're predestined for hell. And the only way to escape is to make Jesus Christ the king of my life, your life, and so on. The Lord, boss of my life, the boss of your life, my life, and so on. Uh, he's got to be in charge. He's got to be king. And that means, yes, you're going to have to listen to him, and that means you're going to have to stop sinning. The things that you like, you might like to get a little drunk every now and then. You might like to look at... Uh, Pornography, uh, every now and then you might, what's one more thing you, the person might want to do? You might want to just be vindictive and, and answer back and fight back and so on. Show how tough you are. But when you come to Christ, you know these things are going to have to stop. And he'll help you to stop. You know, he just doesn't say stop. But if you stay in Christ and if you keep practicing, yielding your members to them, to righteousness, you will gain the victory in him. Friend, would you like to come to Christ? If so, please pray this prayer. I mean, Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that I am to him. I give all, Father, help me, Lord, to live you, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Again, if you have prayed that prayer and have meant it, mean it every day. <laughs> 
indeed meet it every day and to help you along that line we have two things in it for you we have sapphirestreams.com is they're there first of all the first thing that's there would be Severage for Growth in Christ, Severage for Growth in Christ. I bring up the URL for you right now, although this will show you the lessons that I have for you. But if you go to sapphirestreams.com, just there, and if you go to the audio resources, you'll find the recording Severage for Growth in Christ. Please listen to that. Then also, if you go further into sapphirestreams.com and you go forward slash BEC forward slash you get the basic elements of Christianity. And once again, do not be afraid that the site is not secure. That I only need that if I ask you to sign in. Okay. And if I ever do that, I'll probably have a section on there whereby it will be secure. But right now, I'm not messing with that because, like I said, it's just going to be a hassle year after year, year after year. If you get sick and you don't update your website, you're in trouble, basically. You know, something happens, no. So I just keep it simple out there. And so basic elements of Christianity, you'll find it at sapphirestreams.com forward slash BEC forward slash. And take those lessons, and that will help you to grow in Jesus Christ. And now we'll get to our prayer requests. But before we do, I want to remind you that we, are, we will be at a church called The River at 450. Tina Academy Street tonight, and we'll study the Gospel of John. We'll be there, God willing, at 7 p.m. in Sanctuary 2. We are not associated, affiliated with the river, but we rent from them. We rent Sanctuary 2, so we'll be there, God willing, at 7 p.m. Also, Thursday, 7 p.m., we'll be back in Song of Solomon, one of the most versatile books I've ever seen. I didn't know there was so much in there. It's so deep and it can take you, and what should I say, it's, it's good for the Jews, it's good for the Gentiles, and all that. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful book and all that. And so many deep, deep truths. Uh, you know, I'm not going too far. You know, listen, the Holy Spirit wrote the Word of God. He wrote the Word of God. And when He chooses certain words, He's sending us a message more than one sentence can say. You can only say so much in one sentence and with English words or even Hebrew words. But if you kind of put stuff in there like the Holy Spirit does, he's sending us a big, big message. And he wants us to study and compare scripture. Amen. So uh, join us at 7 p.m. on Thursday also at the church called the River Sanctuary 2 at 7 p.m. 450 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland. Now, we'll get to our prayer requests. And the first one is going to be from Lebanon, right? Bomb workers recently reported how God is at work in families through the outreach efforts of a Christian ministry in Lebanon. Through visitation, food distribution, family counseling, discovery Bible study groups, and educational and athletic programs for kids, Christian workers have had many opportunities to share the hope of Christ. One worker shared how she he visited a man who wanted to divorce his wife, but after the worker shared biblical truth and prayed with him, he no longer wanted the divorce and is open to hearing more from the Bible. A single mother from another family expressed gratitude for how the sports academy has disciplined her son with biblical principles and for the role models in the program in the absence of his father. Pray for these families and many others like them who need the hope of Christ. Pray that this ministry needs, th this ministry's needs would be met and that it can continue to reach Lebanese families with the gospel. Lord, I thank you for these uh, individuals that it already has touched. Thank you especially for the uh, guy that was uh, taught by the Bible about divorce and then he decided not to do it. I pray that you might just help many more to uh, uh, change their mind of things that they intend to do when they see in the scripture what it actually says. I pray also that you might continue providing for them. I pray for uh, this son that has uh, been in sports academy and he was taught many principles, biblical principles, and I pray that you might just help them to receive them. I pray that you might help them to be uh, 
things to be provided for them that they need for these teachings and for uh, the witnessing. I pray also that you might help us every day to be a witness to others as we proclaim uh, what you've done in our lives. And this we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. India. Last July in India's Bogdaguda village, Hindu nationalists broke into several Christians' homes and destroyed property to warn them to leave or be killed. Hindu. And a year later, that's a religion. You know, if, if my religion did that, I wouldn't want to be in that. See, basically, it's a cover for sin. You start, and I know some people call themselves Christians. They'll do stuff like that, too. If you just got religion, and you're covered, it's a cover for your sin. All right. So a year later, the Christian villagers sold everything they had to start constructing a church building in February 2021. On May 16th, around 100 Hindu villagers from surrounding communities came to demolish the church. Pray for protection for this Christian community. Pray for the Hindu nationalists who come to know Christ. Pray for provision for the Christians in light of the property that was destroyed. And Father, we do pray for the Hindus that you soften their hearts. Help them, Lord, to see that all they have is religion that permits them to sin. Help them to see, Lord, that you have life and that more abundantly. And help them to come to that. Draw them to you. We pray that you protect this Christian community that's out there. Watch over them. Help them, Lord, to hear from you, especially when they might be under attack. And we pray also that you provide for the needs of these Christians who lost property in this attack by the Hindus. We pray to meet this need. We pray for India that you help the Lord to overturn their anti-conversion laws and help them, Lord, just to turn their lives over to you, we pray, because you do love everyone. And this we ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to bring up another one I'm going to do by memory, and we'll pray about it again at church tonight. Uh, there's, listen to this. Souls are getting saved, and God has a mighty hand. Listen to this. It's up in my timeline. Uh, over in Iran, there was a church house leader, and he was trying to deliver. Well, it's Farsi. And then the language is Farsi over there. So he's trying to deliver Farsi and New Testament. He had boxes of them in the car. And he's driving down the road, and he sees a police checkpoint. <laughs> so he, he pulls over and puts the boxes on the side of the road, and he goes to the police checkpoint. That night, the chief of police, the, the Persian, this is an unsafe person. You know, he's coming by in a pickup truck. He sees these boxes, and he thinks it's contraband. So he picks them up, puts them in his truck. Takes them home, opens it up. They're New Testaments. And because, <laughs> and guess what he did? He didn't throw them away, but because the Persian New Year was about to happen, he decided to give the New Testaments out as gifts to everyone in his family, everyone in his household, and I don't know anyone else. And it, it got back to these people that this would happen. <laughs> the, the chief of police did it. <laughs> that God had a hand in that one. Amen. Yeah, if you're saved, go ahead and keep passing our tracks and tell people about Christ any way that you can uh, at all. And because the Word of God does not return void, uh, it's going to do one or two things. Either person will get hardened or they get softened at all. Well, I don't want them to get hardened. Sometimes they have to get hardened and broken. Okay? So don't worry about that. Let God do the work. Okay? So sometimes it's soft people, sometimes it hard them. But you just let God take care of that. You put out the word of God, and either in word or in deed, most, mostly in deed, and also in print and so on, and let souls come to the Lord. Because Christ has come back. And we want everyone to be ready for him. And we want to purge ourselves and buy a price. And that's why we keep saying this victory in Jesus. I'm going to harp on that more and more as time goes on. Because there is victory in Christ. I don't, it bothers me when I see people. <laughs> I keep sinning. I keep floating up. There's victory in Christ. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, and you can have that. 
And but we want to get ready for the Lord's return. Of course, you and I can die at any time. But the thing is, we want to be ready for his return. It can happen at any moment. Oh, there's so many things I can tell you about. But friend, we keep looking up. And so we say, Maranatha! Maranatha.